Hello again. So this is a continuation of our discussions of social stratification. And this lecture, we're going to look at the class system. So in the most recent lecture that you took notes on, we talked about a caste system and how that is based on ascribed statuses. But with a class system, such as the one we have in the United States, that's based on achieved statuses. And what did I say were our primary achieved statuses that we're going to focus on a whole lot? Income, occupation, education. So please start living and breathing a combination of income, occupation, and education. If you haven't heard me enough say it, make sure you write it down. Income, occupation, education. These are three ascribed, achieved, oops, 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 achieved statuses that you have to know go into social stratification in the United States. So we have a class system, and a class system has a specific definition sociologically. That is based on ownership and control. So a class system is based on ownership and control of resources that exist or and or the work that people do in a society. Now, in previous uh, definitions of things, or when I've given you key words that need to go into definitions, I've used the term social resources. Here I'm specifically using the word resources because I want to make sure that it not only includes social resources, such as rights, voice in politics, access to education and, and other resources, you know, supplemental income and stuff like this. Those are social resource kind of things, rights and privileges that exist in a society. But additionally, economic resources are what is included in this class system definition. So I've got a really general word, just resources, because I want you to notice that it is social resources, but it's also economic resources, okay? So it's ownership and control of resources and or the work that people do, because not everybody owns the kinds of macro scale resources that we are talking about here uh, when I say ownership and control of resources. In this day and age, the resources would be huge Monsanto controlled farming conglomerates or banks, international banks and health systems and all of this kind of stuff. The ownership and control of those really just generates wealth. And some of us might work for those agencies, but we don't control the trajectory of how the decisions are made or what kind of social impact they have. We just work for them. So that's like a really quick snapshot modern view of the, the difference between ownership and control of resources and work that people do. But when we are investigating a class system, we're going to go back in history and we're going to look at some um, origin points for class systems, or at least theorists that suggest where the origin of class systems came from. So uh, just like we did with sociology in general in the first half of the term, we went all the way back to the Industrial Revolution and we looked at the origins of how sociology evolved as a social science. We are going to look at some theorists who suggest potential ways th that in their educated opinion, class systems evolved. Okay, so we're going to do that. But that little synopsis there was a modern day thing with the examples that I used. Okay. So we know that our three socio, uh, excuse me, it's a socioeconomic status. I haven't given you that term yet, but the three achieved statuses are education, occupation, and income. These three things combined are the way that social mobility is supposed to be possible with a class system. We are supposed to be able to get an education so that we can do certain types of work there's the occupation thing. We can do certain types of work that enable us to get the type of income that we want. And if we have a certain type of income, we should, in theory, be able to reinvest some of that income and become at least partial owners of some social resources that th that can then work for us in order to generate income instead of just our elbow grease generating income, like my grandma used to say, elbow grease. Um, so this 
um, concept of being able to increase your education, increase, therefore, therefore increase your occupation, which therefore increases your income level, this idea in the USA and other places in the world like Europe is what evolved into the concept of capitalism as an economic system. Now, I realize now as I turn around and look at this board, I forgot to label this little circular thing that I drew for you. But please, somewhere off to the side, or if you still have space to put great big over the top of it, a label that says capitalism, please don't tell your economics teacher that I simplified it this much. But for sociology class, we need to think of it in these simplistic terms. Capitalism, which is the economic system that evolved out of this class system process, capitalism is a macro scale economic structure that encourages people, here's the first part here, it encourages people to own things. I put stuff because stuff basically means resources, is back to that word resources. It encourages people to own stuff, be independent and take care of yourself. But that's not the only thing that it encourages. It also encourages you to put that stuff that you own to work for you. So the second part is use that stuff to make money for yourself. So even though we are talking about a macro scale process here, let me use a micro scale example. If you have a lawnmower, then sure, you can use it for your own personal benefit and mow your own lawn. But if you have neighbors, if you have friends, and they also have lawns that need to be mowed, can you offer to mow their lawn too and say, hey, I'll do it for XYZ price. And does that help you instead of just having that lawnmower cost you money, does that help you make money from that lawnmower? and potentially pay for the cost of the lawnmower or that it you know originally took from you or also does it so in other words does it help you pay off debt could it possibly help you pay some bills in life and then therefore after you have maybe extra could it give you something to reinvest so now you don't just have a lawnmower but you got a leaf blower too so when we reinvest whatever percentage of the profit so this essentially is profit that we are supposed to be able to make in a capitalist system. So if we own stuff and capitalism encourages us to use that stuff to make money, then when we make money, sure, we can pay off debt. Sure, we can go on a vacation and use it for life. But capitalism encourages you to at least part of that, at least a percentage of what you are making off ownership of that property, you should reinvest into improving that property or gaining more property and then you end up with more stuff. So one, two, three, four, by the time you finish the number four, you're back to the top and guess what? You own stuff and you can go through this cycle again. And as you go through this cycle again, well, if you start out with more stuff the second time around, is your profit bigger the second time around? That's the idea. And so that's what capitalism encourages us to do. And that's why these things are achieved statuses that you are supposed to be able to increase all of these things. Because I just as easily could have said education instead of lawnmower, because aren't you in school right now? Because the education is going to give you an opportunity to be taken seriously when you want to apply for a job that you want. And the reason you're choosing that job is because of the initial income and the potential for future income that it gives you. Okay, so capitalism is the economic system, macro scale economic system, that is connected to the macro scale social stratification system we call social class. Now, to end this very brief, um, very simplistic lesson on capitalism, forgive me all you economists out there, um, to end this, let's talk about how in the most recent video together, I mentioned that class was listed, correctly listed, as an ascribed status in our chapter four when we learned about social structure and the components of social structure. Why do you think that is? Hmm. Maybe, and in the next lecture we're going to investigate this further, but maybe since higher education 
that is required for most of the occupations all of you are going to want in life that's required for income starting out income levels and then promotion income levels as you move through life since this isn't free since we have to pay for that and we have that ladder i didn't draw it on the board again but you should have it in your notes we have that ladder that shows you all the different rungs or the different layers of categories of people in society if you start out low on that ladder based on your start out education occupation and income level not just you as a little tiny baby but what about the parents in that household where your socialization process happens if you have parents of a low education level, of a low occupation level, of a low income level, well then the resources in that micro scale household are going to be what they are and therefore the baby is reared in, their upbringing happens in, a situation with low economic resources, low educational support from the parents at least, and a low occupation level example for us to play uh, when, when we're little, right? I mean, when we go through the play stage and the game stage like George Herbert Mead talked about. So um, the ascribed status of class is super complicated. It gives us an opportunity to synthesize information like we're supposed to learn how to and practice doing in this class together this semester. Class is an ascribed status, even though all this other stuff is based on being achievements. Class itself is an ascribed status because of that socialization process, because of life experience that we are going to go through based on the resources that are in our individual households. So let's look more deeply into that question um, in our next lecture together. We will investigate a term that a very famous sociologist gave to us called life chances. It is a key term. If you are tired right now and you don't want to focus on taking some really good notes on the next lecture, then put me off until another time, but text me with questions. Bye.